Hello, good, good weekend to all. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a uh, weekend review of the uh, European markets for Monday's trading, the 18th of April 2016. Okay, let's try and decipher uh, as to uh, where we think the markets will open on Sunday night. I think that's probably the, uh, the question in everybody's mind with this uh, Doha meeting, meeting over the weekend. I think it starts today. And uh, my um, uh, reading between the lines basically is the fact that uh, we are uh, going to gap down, okay? And I'll certainly explain uh, from a technical perspective and a fundamental perspective as well. Okay, uh, in terms of the uh, markets themselves, uh, the European markets certainly finished negative on, on a Friday, along with the US markets and the Asian markets certainly finished down too, okay? In terms of economic data from the US, the US data was certainly weak. Uh, consumer sentiment was weak, industrial production was weak out in the US. So overall net net weak, okay, in terms of German growth potentially weak as well. Uh, we have Brexit concerns, Grexit concerns, and uh, this uh, the oil price certainly has, uh, has, has found a, a potential uh, double top resistance as well, okay. Now, how important will the Doha meeting be? Now, according to Cathy Dian, very important, and as we all know, uh, given the fact that uh, the dollar, uh, from um, if you look at the price of oil, uh, the dollar and the dollar potentially topped out, oil prices started to rise, and that tr triggered and created this inflation. Uh, and as inflation started to move higher, then uh, we certainly uh, helped the Aussie and the Kiwi trades, and obviously helped risk in general. Uh, now, again, Catalina does refer to this as well. If you recall, the greenback was trading strongly when oil prices hit a 10-year low of $26. As we all know, the oil and dollar relationship and the commodity and oil relationship. Uh, for the past few months, investors have been patiently waiting for oil-producing nations to officially freeze production. Now, again, it's going to be uh, up in the air. A lot of the uh, news certainly has been priced into the market, so certainly uh, take that into consideration as well. Okay, so... In the event of no deal, oil prices will collapse. So this is the important thing here, okay? In the event of no deal, oil prices will collapse, commodity currencies will fall, stocks will extend lower, and the dollar will rise as risk aversion returns to the market. This is a very important uh, sentence, folks, okay? So again, I'm going to read it to you again before, uh, before I start my analysis, okay? In the event of no deal, oil prices will collapse, commodity currencies will fall, stocks will extend lower, and the dollar rise... Uh, will obviously trigger a bout of risk aversion, okay? So, again, remember that sentence, and I'll start my analysis, okay? Be sure to visit tradesignaler.com and download the latest app on Google Play and Android, uh, which is also available in the App Store via Apple. So, uh, certainly download that and gain access to my uh, market analysis and commentary throughout the day via the app. Also, uh, there are other individuals that are certainly sharing their analysis as well. Okay, folks. Now, in terms of the um, the market from a technical perspective, uh, let's just look at it from a fundamental perspective first of all. Okay, so everything hinges on oil. Okay, everything hinges on oil. If everything hinges on oil, then everything hinges on the dollar. If everything hinges on the dollar, then we all know what's going to happen to equities as well. Okay, so the inverse relationship exists. So let's start with the dollar index first of all. And let's see exactly where that's positioned before we go ahead and, and focus on other variables. Okay, so first of all, if I bring up the daily chart of the dollar, even the weekly chart of the dollar index, you can see that the weekly chart of the dollar index is into support. So when the dollar index was up here, that's when oil prices obviously started to make a base and started to pro propel higher. Now that the dollar is down here, okay, not only is the dollar down here, we also have other variables that are going to uh, trigger risk aversion. Now, number one, uh, we had several, uh, well, I wouldn't say several, but we had two members from the um, the Fed certainly sounding hawkish. Now, let's just uh, let's just read a few out to you. Let's just read a few out to you. Okay, if I can go back and uh, locate this. Here we go. Okay, Fed Evans. High hurdle for April hike may get three hikes this year. Okay, so that alone supports the argument 
that the dollar will certainly rise. So it's very hard for the dollar to make a new low with the potential of three hikes this year. Okay, think of it from that perspective. If the Fed or the FOMC is talking of potential, this is Mr. Evans here, talking of potentially hiking three times this year, then it's very hard for the dollar to make a new low here. Okay, Fed Evans, hike could be in June or a little later. So again, this is supporting the dollar itself. Yellen certainly taught the dollar down, but the dollar certainly now is into support on the weekly chart. Okay, not only that, we also had the earthquake in Japan, which obviously uh, we have uh, had um, a lot of destruction from, and also there have been uh, potential aftershocks as well, and a tsunami alert. And again, that triggers a bout of risk aversion. Okay, now the daily chart of the price of the dollar, as you can see here, we've certainly broken out this downward sloping contracting wedge buy. OK, again, that's a bullish sign going over to the four hour chart. You can clearly see that we have an inverted head and shoulders formation. As we put in the potential right shoulder, OK, and looking to move higher. OK, so the dollar index certainly remains bullish. OK, so let's test that. Let's cross verify that. Let's just bring up the chart of USD CAD. Uh, if I have that here, I think I have. No, okay, let me just get that added here. Uh, because if you remember, USD CAD is very important in terms of the uh, the actual uh, relationship with oil. And as we all know, this weekend, it's all about oil. So it's going to be very important to uh, see the relationship there. So I've put up USD CHF and USD CAD. Uh, with me let me just save this for future reference okay here we go okay so you have usd cad so the, on the one hour chart we have we failed to make a, a new low okay so no lower low the four hour chart at the moment trailing sideways daily chart you can see that we are into support and the weekly chart we're into support as well so given the inver inverse relationship with the price of the usd cad or cad itself uh, say in the oil price, okay. So USD card oil price inverse relationship. When USD card goes higher, oil goes lower. And as you can see here, USD card has been moving lower, oil has been going higher. Okay. Now USD card is into support. You're looking for a potential bounce here, which obviously is confirmed with the dollar index, okay, and confirmed by Mr. Fred Evans. Uh, talk of potential three hikes this year. Again, hawkish rhetoric, and therefore looking for a bounce in the dollar. Uh, obviously, Canadian dollar will move lower. And that will cause the price of oil to move lower as well. As we all know, a uh, dollar higher equals uh, potential deflation, which means oil price is lower. So into market analysis or fundamentals are speaking here and telling you that you are looking at oil prices to move potentially lower. And this Doha meeting is an absolute dud. OK, OK, so let's just cross -ref reference that now with the USD CHF and USD JPY as well. Let's just cross reference that. So. Let's bring up USD CHF. Okay, let's just go to a daily chart here. Uh, USD CHF already has started to bounce. USD JPY again already started to bounce, so they are already bullish. Okay, Euro USD as well. Let's just cross reference that with Euro USD. Now we've already had an article out over the weekend. ECB not aiming at uh, weakening the euro, so they're happy with where the euro is. They're happy with the well, not exactly happy, but they have to accept the fact that the uh, that they are at the mercy of uh, the US markets. OK, so again, uh, you are holding that Fib 61 percent retracement and you are looking for a pop in the euro, given the fact that the ECB and the US, if you look at the euro USD monetary policy divergence. OK. Um, OK, yes, so this is all about monetary policy divergence. The US is going to potentially uh, uh, raise rates and uh, the European uh, ECB are basically no longer cutting rates okay so that will certainly keep the euro supported uh, versus the us uh, currency okay so bear that in mind well it should keep the euro supported overall regardless really now, i think one of the biggest trades at the moment is euro gbp going into the uh, potential or short euro gbp going into this um, june vote okay and Euro GBP is actually into support as well, so bear that in mind. Okay, folks, right, so you can clearly see here the Euro into support. So the Euro, if the Euro USD starts to move higher, then you are looking at a potential 
and which it already is due to monetary policy divergence, then you are looking at risk aversion in the equity market as well. So bear that in mind. And that certainly is slightly different in terms of the, um, the USD card, USD CHF, USD JBY. Each and every obviously central bank has their own policy. But the focus that we remain, uh, or our focus maintains mainly on the fact that we're looking at the US dollar index. And the dollar index certainly is expected to move higher, which again is negative for commodities. Okay, so now we go on to commodities. Let's bring up the price of copper, for example. Uh, so copper certainly has had this bounce. Okay, so we had this quite a... An impressive sell-off as of late, uh, given the fact that 2.3 certainly uh, sold off quite strongly. And now we've bounced higher and we're back into that resistance zone up here. So back into resistance. So you have previous support equals resistance here. So copper certainly has pushed higher and now certainly finding potential weakness as well. Okay, so certainly moved higher here. And uh, you can clearly see that we've already put in a potential top. And looking for a lower high now and, and obviously looking to flush lower on the price of copper. If you bring up the chart of uh, oil, for example, you can clearly see here on the daily chart, the oil price certainly has made a double top, confirmed it as well. And now we're looking to potentially move low. We may well come back and test this zone here at 38, potentially uh, close the gap below uh, as well. We have an unfilled gap. That may well be the target post Doha meeting. So bear that in mind. Uh, you have an unfilled gap below, which is around $36. So given the fact that we've confirmed the double top and looking for a reversal, Given the fact that the dollar index is into support, USD card is into support as well. Therefore, you are looking at a risk aversion trade. OK, now, not only that, if I bring up the price of gold as well, gold itself, if I bring up the daily chart, for example, you can clearly see that we have a H&S formation with an unfilled gap below and therefore looking to target the downside. So looking at dollar strength, which means commodity weakness uh, and obviously down we go. OK, uh, another index that we can bring up is a CRBQ, if I can get hold of that. Uh, do I have the CRBQ here? Bear with me, let me just go to commodities, 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 commodities. GCC, that's it, GCC and CRBQ. Do I have the CRBQ here? Right, okay. Bear with me. Okie dokie, right. Okay, so okay, so it seems to be a mess at the moment. Let's get rid of that. So what we need is the wisdom tree commodity. Could there we go? Okay, so basically, if I go to the daily chart here, okay, so we certainly have weakness on the uh, the actual commodity index. We haven't made a higher high. Okay, so certainly a sluggish here. Um, certainly finding weakness at present. I mean, you do have two unfilled gaps. You've got an unfilled gap there. And then obviously looking down below, you have an unfilled gap too. So these are zones that you're going to keep an eye out for. But for now, that's basically what you're observing, okay, in terms of the commodity index, okay? So you are looking at weakness here, okay, which is confirmed. Uh, now... Let's get rid of this. Okay, so we seem to be good. Okay, right. So dollar index, so basically what have I proven so far? Okay, dollar index certainly remains bid. Okay, and therefore the dollar will move higher, which in turn will send the commodities lower, giving the double top and confirmation. Okay, in terms of uh, uh, the commodities. So dollar index higher, FX markets as well. If I bring up the chart of the Aussie, for example, if I bring up the daily chart here, of the Aussie USD, you can see we're at a double top resistance indicating a weakness. If I bring up the chart of the Kiwi, you can certainly see that the NZD USD is into resistance. So dollar index certainly is into support, looking for a thrust tile and dollar index, which in turn sends the Aussie lower, the Kiwi lower, USD card higher, and will send the Euro USD higher regardless because of risk aversion. Remember, the uh, Euro is an anti QE trade. Uh, USD JPY, in terms of USD JPY, you won't see a uh, thrust higher why because you're looking at yen strength as well okay 
USD CHF. Again, you're looking at uh, CHF strength. So that is certainly a different animal altogether, okay, because of risk aversion. So from my perspective, USD CAD higher, US in the dollar index higher. You are looking at Aussie USD and, and uh, NZD USD moving lower, oil prices moving lower. And then we know exactly what's going to happen to equities. Now, talking about equities, let's move on to equities. Let's go to the daily chart of the euro stocks. First of all, you can see that we are holding that resistance zone there. And we put in a doji on Friday as well. Looking at a 60 minute chart, you can you certainly are holding resistance here. Uh, going to a 10 minute chart, you can clearly see that we did have a potential for a HS formation, but we certainly have um, uh, negated that to a large extent now. And for now, we just focus on the fact that uh, we've closed the gap, okay, and uh, we certainly have failed to make a new high, okay. So, early warning sign of a potential reversal pending, okay. So, looking at uh, weakness uh, going into the week. Uh, the following week especially given the fact that we've had this uh, article over the weekend with the ecb not aiming to weaken the euro a uh, euro strength will ensue okay due to risk aversion anti qe trade and that will hurt the uh, the actual uh, european equities as well okay right going over to the german dax german dax is a perfect hns formation already in play we failed to close the gap above looking for a potential move lower and remember, we do have that unfilled gap at 9760 below. So that will be remain the target. Going to a 60 minute chart, you can see that we've held the resistance. No higher highs. Daily chart as well confirms that we are at that horizontal resistance zone. OK, going over now to the FTSE 100, going over to the weekly chart, you can see that we're into resistance. Going over to the daily chart of the FTSE 100, you can see that we held holding resistance. Previous support equals resistance. 60 minute chart at the moment you have this potential bear flag scenario just consolidating and then obviously looking to potentially break lower okay and if we do break lower then we are going to go back and retest that 6240 and 6230 breakout zone okay going over to the 10 minute chart the FTSE 100 you have your perfect hns formation target 6295 but the ultimate target will be unfilled gap at 6240 so can you see how the equity market is already positioned to sell off the Aussie and Kiwi are telling you that you are looking at risk aversion because they failed to move higher even with stronger Chinese data. It indicates to you that all good news is already baked into the cake. Same with equities as well. OK, so everything from my perspective looking weaker. Uh, just to confirm, I have actually if you go to my Twitter timeline as well, you'll see that I actually open up a short on the Nasdaq uh, on the Friday and also I was short the Kiwi. So I am short the Kiwi and I'm short the Nasdaq going into Sunday night's trading and I'm expecting quite a uh, prolific gap down. OK, now the Nasdaq has a double whammy because of the um, the actual downgrade or warning with regards to a production cut in terms of the iPhone. Uh, uh, Apple's iPhone certainly will hurt earnings and also Taiwan securities uh, as well as it Taiwan semiconductors manufacturing. I think they certainly forecast weakness as well. So. Uh, and also given the fact that ad parlor i think it was one of the advertising sites certainly indicated uh, ad sales dropping for facebook as well so the uh, tech sector certainly was weak regardless fundamentally uh, and technically i'll discuss that as well with you with the us market video so i think that's a, a wrap folks okay as always uh, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs uh, certainly take advantage of the uh, potential uh, 25 percent bonus that's an offer for all new trading accounts uh, certainly if you are interested in that email me i'll get that applied for you uh, and be sure to trade with cfds.com uh, and also uh, visit tradesignaler.com and download the latest app for my analysis on that note goodbye good weekend and let's look forward to the uh, gap down on sunday night goodbye now